Director of Women in View. We're delighted to have Rena moderating this, uh, this chat with Gabriel Kelly, who's our honorary Maverick this year. Um, the Maverick Award is designated to a woman who has made a significant contribution to elevating the status of women and or bringing attention to gender imbalance in terms of women directors around the world. When we talk about directors, we know that we're talking about the individual, ultimately whose vision is going to um, shape what the audiences see and translate what the, what the writer has written. Um, and we also know that the position of the director is the single most influential position for determining the employment of women in all the other categories. So we have really good, solid uh, data, year after year data, that if you have a woman director on the screenplay, they're going to be, uh, the odds are that the, play, the screenplay is going to be written by a woman, which guarantees that they're going to be more, doesn't guarantee, statistically guarantees that they're going to be way more positions and more diversified positions for women. It really raises the odds that a woman uh, director, cinematographer, sound uh, recorders are going to be higher. But your only hope in filmmaking is alliances. Even though the director is the, you know, the central spokesperson, very much in, of course, France, but in America, is, it's very auteur-driven. So it's all about the, the director, which can be, uh, I have something to say about that too, about directors and producers, but you're right, I chose the director to focus on, although I'm not a director, because it's the, it, it is a central role. So alliances, very important, you know, here we are, they give me all the stuff to type, I can't type, but I have to look to the other types that are like, help me. So this is what we did. We drew um, on paper, you know, a keyboard of a type, I didn't even have a type writer. this is medieval, back in the midst of time. <laughs> no laptops. We drew a keyboard and I went back to this one room I was living in, in Hell's Kitchen, aptly named, and for like 20 hours a day I practiced like, oh my god, oh my god. And I pretended I could type, so when the publisher came in I went, <laughs> to tower, again, you know, gods of cinema who formed a company in New York, this is in the early 70s, uh, Sidney Lumet, the director of, you know, something you know, yes, Dog yes. Day Afternoon, 12 Anchorment, partnered with the person who really was my mentor and my film school, a woman who, and of course, let me say her name, and anyone who knows her, raise your hand, Jay Preston Allen. This is interesting because Jay Preston Allen is certainly equal, if, I mean, she's absolutely equal in her accomplishments to Sidney Lumet, but this is, this is our life, as we're, we're all women, there's no men in the audience, I don't think, but look, this is our life, over and over and over and over again, you have to talk about why Jane Campion is simply the most extraordinary talent, why you know, so many women in so many fields, not just in film, they're formidable, they're amazing. We don't even know their names so often. So Jay Preston Allen uh, is a really, uh, was, she's now dead, but she is a completely incredible um, film professional. She's a screenwriter. She wrote Marnie. She worked with Hitchcock. She wrote The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. She wrote Cabaret. She wrote Annie. She wrote Family, a hit TV series at that time. She wrote True, a Broadway show. She is just certainly an amazing screenwriter, an amazing producer. Don't ever cry. You're, you're, you're coming into a business where everyone expects women to cry, and you know, we know women don't cry a lot. You know, they actually don't because we're too busy. Like, two <laughs> other things to do. If you're going to cry, go into the bathroom and cry, repair everything, come out, and just go on. I have no time to teach you anything, so it's just like diving into the deep end. Either you keep up or you can't keep up, and then I'll just find someone who can keep up. I think um, for many reasons, women, we explain a lot. You know, we, we like to ex explain, like why, why some, 
why is it like this? Well, that's good, but I noticed she never did. She always was totally direct and just forged this very active um, persona that moved things along and stopped people, you know, kind of quizzing her and, du and, and double questioning her. They just sort of. We got a very on. famous icon in Canada, Nellie McLeod, was the first woman in Parliament. And Nellie McClung, somebody helped me not butcher her quote, said, never explain, and never apologize. Do it how you want. Yeah, and, yeah and, and let them scream. Why are you telling me what doesn't work? I don't have time. So I, I learned to only, this is a good thing for jobs. Yeah. And I, I, I particularly emphasize this with women filmmakers I work with, or my students, even more, because I want to give them an edge. I, I mean, I should be fair to all my students, but I do, you know, and that is to always come, you know, when you work, come to your bosses with uh, prowess and achievements. Don't start whining and going, you know, I couldn't find the, the you become, you personify not being able to do can you imagine being a director and saying action and no one moved? And these guys were just like, <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and, oh God, it's like, if only I could have done anything to help. I mean, it really, it's just so upsetting. Yeah. I said, wait, um, nothing's going on out there. And he, he looked at me and he goes, well, what do you expect? Like, we have a virgin in a gang bang. <gasps> And, and then I said, well, be the hero. You know, and then he was like, and then he goes out. And the minute he came out, you know, I mean, she didn't say, it, it all went rolling line. You know, it was rolling fine. I don't know if you don't know about the direct, the women directors of Singapore used by this book, because there's nine of them listed in it, and it's a small country. But, you know, when you write an article, and I want to drill down into this, with you as I did with her. I said, when you write in the New York Times about Singapore, and you you only mention the same three male directors that everybody mentions, it's as if there are no women directors in Singapore. You're a woman reporter. This means every time people Google and use the New York Times as a source, which they do a lot, these women whose names they are only mentioned in the book because Singapore is so small and the book has to cover the world and Asia is a huge chapter. So they're literally only listed almost by name. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I said, but if you had mentioned one of them, when people were doing research, that name would come up and you know, you all know what that's like. Like, the business I started out in, the, of Hollywood films, you fight for those credits. Like, I had to fight to get a credit on the City which I think was like assistant to Jake Westman. Like I should have had a much better credit than that, like associate producer, because I did all of that work. And again, this is a, you know, we, it's like a broken record, but if I'd been a guy, I saw other guys starting out to work, they would get that credit much more easily. But Hollywood and the movie business, the fact you people look at IMDB, they Google you, you're as good, you need, you have got, that's what I say to women filmmakers, Oh, I, what's your credit? Um, assistant, well, shouldn't you be the assistant? Yeah, but I, I you know, I just, uh, I, I didn't want to get into that. Well, get into it. You knew that the first narrative director, and so you could say the first fiction director in the world was Alice B. Blaché, who was a woman who made a film called The Cabbage Fairies. Very short, but she made that before anyone else had done anything. And by the way, she was working as a secretary in Paris, and you know, her company, the Luminary Brothers, they, they had a camera, and they said, well, try it out, or you know, do you want to, she said, oh, I'll try that out. And then she made this. So I hardly ever meet anyone who knows that, except film scholars. But in Hollywood, at the beginning of this art and business, Women were like completely all there. They were writers, producers, directors, actors. There was no, all of this that I'm writing about that we're dealing with, it just really wasn't there. As you see over and over and over again, that it's, it's not just to cite 
you know, the many amazing women, amazing things they've done. But over and over again, you see that it's women who, who, for example, in Saudi Arabia, the woman who made the film about uh, the bicycle, that, that was the first film by a woman ever made in Saudi Arabia. But this is very common, I'll tell you. It's not just Saudi Arabia. It, it was also the first feature film ever made in Saudi Arabia. It was also the first time Saudi Arabia ever put forward a feature film in the foreign language category for an Oscar. So over and over again, it's women who do the thing that has not been yet done. And they do it because they can't, they do it because of people everywhere who do amazing things, because people won't let you do it. They go, you can't do it. Because we just get so tired of, <laughs> of like sitting around in rooms with guys and some women saying it did make a lot of money, but no, 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 no. It's just not true. You should ne don't ever accept this. Don't just don't accept it. Be like Jay Allen, like, well, I made a lot of money from it or something, you know, even if you didn't. Oh, you did? Yeah. Because the upending and the implosion of the old system, which is why the last word of my title is China word, it's very, it's, it's the best thing for women because it means that no one knows what to do.